Hello everybody, so in light of Tesla being included in the S&P 500 this month in December 2020 and also in light of this stock becoming a clear bubble at this point, I decided to make a video on the nature of bubbles throughout history and to compare these past bubbles throughout history to this current one in Tesla. Obviously in doing this I'm assuming that Tesla is in fact in a bubble, but I think that at this point this should be pretty obvious. I'm sure I'll get some hate for questioning this sacred stock, but in case you didn't notice, I don't care. <laughs> so today, I'm going to take a look into what has likely caused this bubble to form in Tesla's stock, and also what could be the pin to pop this giant bubble, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back to The Contrarian, my name's Logan. I really like to talk about overall success in investing, as well as going against crowd thinking mentality. Uh, bottom line kind of overall takeaway is if the crowd is chasing after something you should probably not go with them so if you like these kinds of topics just consider subscribing and I also want to make a disclaimer that this is not to be taken as financial advice I'm not a financial advisor and I also I also want to make it clear that I'm not short or long Tesla um, so to begin with let's just zoom out and take a look at Tesla as compared to other car companies in the world now I know that there's a common chorus that Tesla bulls go to that, uh, but Tesla is a tech company. It's not just a car company, or Tesla is a car company, but it's also disrupting energy. And I hate to break it to you, but between 70% to 95% of Tesla's revenue comes from selling cars. It's a car company. <laughs> or if it is a tech company, what tech products does it sell? Other car companies such as Honda actually derive a larger percentage of their revenue from other streams than Tesla. Um, yeah, let's look at uh, Honda. Automotive, 71%. Motorcycle, 14%. Financial services, 13%. Tesla's not in financial services. Power and other business. Um, so yeah, if there were to be a car company that has a more diversified source of revenue, it would not be Tesla, it might be Honda, it might be some other car company out there. But let's just get an idea of how gigantic this bubble is. Tesla right now is worth approximately 65% as much as all other automakers in the world <laughs> combined. This is insane. So Tesla, a company with zero EBITDA, if not negative EBITDA, and a revenue of a mere $24 billion, um, in comparison, the all the other automakers have a revenue of roughly 2.3 trillion. Uh, so I did some simple math on this. I divided market cap by revenue of the total uh, all other automakers and Tesla separately and then compared them side by side. All other automakers have a total market cap of roughly 1 trillion with a revenue of 2.3 trillion. Um, so dividing these two gives them a multiple of roughly 0.43. Tesla has a market cap of 650 billion and a revenue of 24.5 billion. Um, and this is a multiple of 27. So in relation to other automakers, Tesla is 61 times more valued than them. So yeah, this is a bubble. And it appears that someone else who I've talked about who is good at seeing bubbles also sees the same thing. <laughs> Michael Burry's roughly pointing out what I just said. Um, so hopefully you begin to see that Tesla is in a bubblish state. In fact, you could probably take the cake right now for the single largest overvalued company in the world. And I feel pretty confident in saying this. However overvalued Apple or Amazon might be right now, there's just no way they are 61 times more valued than their competitors. That's just, that degree of bubble is not anywhere else in the market right now. So this might seem like an obvious decision to not buy Tesla stock right now. And in fact, it would seem that anybody who had taken a basic investing class could identify Tesla as being overvalued. Now this opens up a lot of questions, such as why would anyone be buying Tesla at these obscenely high prices? And also, why did the S&P 500 reverse its previous decision and decide to include Tesla in this index fund? And asking these questions to me is kind of like asking yourself why anyone was buying stocks back during the dot-com bubble or any of these previous bubbles. The answer to all of these questions lies in investor psychology and emotions overriding sound thinking. And people are emotional creatures, 
we always seem to think that past bubbles were in the past and you know they'll never happen again and we've learned from the past but we fail to realize that what caused these bubbles in the past is still at play in everyone's mind it's still factors into the decisions we make and I always keep coming back to this investor psychology chart because it just explains completely just these different phases of um, emotions that investors get caught into that makes them make terrible decisions you know buying at the worst possible place and selling at the worst possible place that that is what you would fall into if you were listening just to your emotions um, so let's take a quick look back down memory lane at past bubbles that have happened and we're actually going to go uh, way back in time to 1630s roughly in Holland and that's with the Dutch tulip bubble um, and during the tulip bubble tulip prices soared 20 fold between November 1636 and February 1637 before plunging 99 percent by May of 1637 and as bubbles typically do, tulip mania consumed a wide cross-section of the Dutch population, and at its peak, some tulip bulbs commanded prices greater than the price of some houses. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, it seems. Um, number two, we go to the South Sea Bubble, and this was in 1720. It was created by a more complex set of circumstances than the tulip bubble. Um, the South Sea Company was formed in 1711 and was promised a monopoly by the British government on all trades with the Spanish colonies of South America. And essentially, yeah, it just produced a giant bubble again, um, brought a severe economic crisis as a result. Uh, number three, we go more recently to Japan's real estate and stock market bubble. This is much more closer to the present day. It's roughly 1980s. The yen surged 50%, and this triggered a Japanese recession in 1986. Um, to counter it, the Japanese government ushered in a program of monetary and fiscal stimulus. And a big takeaway from this bubble in Japan is that this has never recovered. The real estate and stock markets in Japan have never recovered to the previous highs that they saw before this bubble. Um, number four, we go to the dot-com bubble. You're all probably very familiar with this. Um, probably the largest bubble in size and scale. Few bubbles matched the dot-com bubble of the 1990s. At that time, the increase in popularity of the internet triggered a massive wave of speculation in uh, new economy businesses. As a result, hundreds of dot-com companies achieved multi-billion dollar valuations as soon as they went public. And yet, yeah, this also triggered a U.S. recession. <clears throat> and number five, we go to the U.S. housing bubble. Um, some experts believe that the bursting of the NASDAQ or dot-com bubble led to U.S. investors piling into real estate due to the mistaken belief that real estate is a safer asset class. And yeah, also that proved to be incorrect and this caused a recession as well. So from all of these bubbles, we can see that the emotion and crowd thinking mentality drove investors to ignore potential red flags and they bought into extremely overvalued assets or ideas in the past. And Tesla and this current market have a lot in common with several of these past bubbles. Tesla is very similar to the dot-com bubble in that investors see a new technology that has the potential to disrupt the world, and then they jump in regardless of the price and send the valuation much higher than would be justified you know, for a normal car company or for a normal tech company or whatever the uh, situation might be. Uh, also, in terms of magnitude of the bubble, Tesla could also be in line with the tulip mania bubble that happened in just how rapidly you know, Tesla stock has run up in the last year. And also in line with the housing bubble, Tesla seems to be in part caused by all of the money that left housing back in 2008 uh, and is now flowing into index funds. Um, so Tesla is definitely being boosted by all these index funds and ETF inclusions that it has recently received. So the only remaining question is what could pop this bubble in Tesla? And in order to answer this, I think we should look back at Tesla earlier this year during the COVID lockdowns. In a matter of six weeks, Tesla's stock went from roughly $900 down to a low of around $350. And this is obviously before the stock split, you know, it's nowhere near these prices right now. So this was an extremely 
bearish move in response to everything that happened as a result of these index funds going down and all the news we were hearing about COVID. And this was a 60% downward move. And the index funds that Tesla was included in and all these ETFs only crashed roughly 30 to 40%. So it would seem that Tesla uh, at this point is entirely reliant on inflows of capital coming from index fund investors. And I've gone through this a lot in my previous videos about the index fund bubble. And just index fund investors, when they're buying index funds, they have no idea what they're buying. And um, yeah, at this point, that's probably the only major source of incoming capital in Tesla stock. At this point, in my opinion, Tesla's pretty much exhausted all of these individual investors, you know, who are huge fans of Elon Musk, who are just going to follow him wherever he goes. That's pretty much exhausted at this point, in my opinion. All the incoming, or the majority of the incoming capital is likely from these index funds and ETFs and people buying into them having no idea what they're buying. So to answer this question of when Tesla's bubble will pop is probably in line with answering when the index fund bubble will pop. And index funds will probably begin going down due to COVID um, related news such as bad news regarding the virus or unemployment or business closures. And then this will likely cause Tesla to go down significantly more than these index funds. Um, from there, it will likely be, you know, a crash similar to what we saw earlier this year. But however, I think it probably is not going to bounce back. Um, kind of like these index funds, I think that they're going to see much lower lows in the coming year. Um, and that could really begin, you know, tipping dominoes over for Tesla of lawsuits of um, obviously they can't issue more stock. Um, investors begin to sell further, causing the price to go down. So in my opinion, that would probably begin, you know, the end of Tesla, unfortunately. I mean, it's kind of a, you know, a sad story in some ways, but, um, you know, People always fall into this crowd thinking mentality, unfortunately, and I think we'll begin to see this with Tesla with index funds um, probably during this coming year, just with probably business closures uh, forcing people to really question where the market has gone in the last six months. Um, so again, this is not to be taken as financial advice, but I definitely would not be buying Tesla's stock right now, and I wouldn't be shorting it either just because I have no idea how long this bubble mentality is going to go on. Uh, so bottom line is I personally would not touch it whatsoever. But I'm curious as to what all of you guys think about this and I hope to see you again.